Good morning. Welcome to the Celtic Way Morning Briefing Live. I'm Tony Haggerty, A Haggerty 10, and I'm joined today by Sean Martin at Sean Martin TCW and Alison McConnell. Good morning, guys. How are we doing? Morning, Tony. Tony. How are yourself? Yes, all good. Now, as you can see, we've been flagging up all week. We have a new sponsor for the show. Yay! <laughs> and that sponsor is One Football. You can see it at the top right of your screen on the bottom of the screen there. And it's the one-stop football shop for scores, news, lineups, transfer rumours, live streaming, match highlights, and much, much more. So if you want to immerse yourself in the digital football world, then download the One Football app for the best personalised digital football experience. And we thank them very much for their sponsorship. Thanks, guys. We really appreciate it. Well, it's arrived, guys. It's here. The night that Celtic could finally get over the line. Sean, as the manager says, are we going to bust through the tape at Tannadice? I think they very well might do, Tony. Aye. Um, it's, are we going, I'm not going to, I was going to say, we're not going to go score predictions at the very start. Are we going to flip the script? <laughs> uh, we'll do that at the end. But no, I, th- I think they could. I think they very well could make a, kind of, make a show, put on a show, if you want to put it that way. Um, he's been saying recently, it doesn't matter when they win it, how they win it, as long as they win it. But, he kind of mentioned, as you say, busting through the finish line rather than uh, staggering over it, and that to me suggests he's going to go full strength and and go for the go for the jugular to put on a show in one. Alison, do you think they'll bust through the tape tonight? You expecting, as the Celtic fans have been singing all season, watching Glasgow Celtic putting on a show? I think that will definitely be the intention. I think if you to take anything from Saturday's performance or from the latter stages of of Saturday's performance, is that it's a team who know their champions elect I think uh, Mm -hmm. you go there there's no real pressure on them tonight I think also I thought Dundee United were very disappointing at the weekend I thought it it was a kind of limp showing at at Ibrox against Rangers I'd seen them there in December and thought they'd played pretty well Um, so I don't know if maybe Dundee United are just running out of a bit of steam going into the, the, the last days of the campaign but certainly I think from Celtic's perspective the intention will be to go and and to deliver a title with a certain kind of style. And I think that's been the philosophy that has underpinned the campaign. Yeah, Sean, they've been playing with a certain kind of flair and panache recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, St Johnston game and then Saturday as well. Hearts, first 10 minutes apart. You know, and, and they've, uh, they've won up at Tannadice twice already this season. Have, uh, you know, mm-hmm. so in the head-to-head, Celtic have come out all right against Dundee United this season. They, they won each blip apart. At, yeah, uh, yeah. at Celtic Park, but a pivotal game. The ten, ten men win when Leila Labada scored. Yes, I think Alison wrote a column about that. That kind of seismic title shift. Rangers dropped points at, at Dingwall that day. Mm-hmm. Celtic went on to win later on in the day with the last minute goal from Abada, and I, I guess that just uh, cemented the fact that Celtic believed that they could go on and win the title. Aye, um, there's been a few of those late goals, but that one in particular, right before the the kind of February derby, that meant it was a shit out to go top. Basically, um, yeah. it's pivotal. Well, of course, it was pivotal. Um, overall, you you mentioned the one one draw. That was that was obviously the first meeting between them this season yeah. back in September. You remember I always went on about Jota having been the kind of guy that everybody was trying to go to that that day and stuff, and <clears throat> um, <clears throat> hit the wood. What was it? Three times, twice, three you times that day. Uh, so the one-one draw was was going on a Celtic three-one win. I, I would have said, but it, nonetheless, it was the blip. They've won all three since then because they met them in the cup as well. Yeah, uh, remember? I think the aggregate, you well, know, as the aggregate score of the other three games will be seven nil um, to Celtic. Both games at Tannadice finished three nil. It was a one nil at Parkhead. So I expect goals again in this one, um, not just because of the previous games or even just the previous games at Tannadice, but just because in general, Dundee United give up a lot of chances. Uh, I had a wee look at their stats before coming on and the fifth for goals conceded, which probably ties in with where they are in the league. They're fourth and, um, and I mean, potentially could be fifth if Motherwell are there, Ross County are there, they could be down to sixth, that kind of thing. But in terms of like, the chances that they give up, only Dundee have conceded more kind of expected goals against, which shows you how much they've actually like gave up good chances or gave up chances across the season. Dundee are bottom, remember. Um, Celtic are obviously at the top of that table, both for uh, expected goals and goal, actual goals scored. So I, I think there will be go- goals tonight for Celtic. Um, in terms of, I mean, I mentioned there that, that Dundee United are sitting fourth. 
that's the other concern in terms of they've, it's not like they've got nothing to play for. You could argue Hearts had nothing to play for besides mm-hmm. uh, cup final spots, but the form that Dundee United are in couldn't be any different from Hearts. Um, Hearts were unbeaten in 10. Um, the Dundee United, it's only one win in their last five, but two in their last 11. So they're not playing well. Alison mentioned that she was disappointed with the way that they performed at Ibrooks. Um, that ties in with that as well. Uh, the only thing I would do is I'd point out that although they've only won two out of those 11, they've scored in nine of them. So although they're not winning, they still carry a threat in terms of scoring. Um, so again, I, th- I think it's set up to the goals. Yes, indeed. Alison, I remember you wrote that column with that, about that Dundee United game and the, the points dropped in Dingwall. It was pivotal, wasn't it? And that was a vital one for Celtic in the season when Lyle Abada scored that goal. Yeah, I think, I think you could point to a few significant games where the, the, the title race took on its, its, its shape, really, and that would be one of them. I think the other one was very obviously the, the Celtic Rangers game in February when Celtic went to the top of the league for the first time in the season. But yeah, I, I think Celtic will just be delighted at where they find themselves now. I think it's a... It, it, it's two games where you can enjoy it, I think. I think um, yeah. you don't get many games as a Celtic player where there's not a weight of pressure. I think these essentially are some of them. I think it'll be a very strong team tonight. I think um, it'll be a, a case of go out and enjoy the fruits of your labour, almost enjoy what's got you to this point and the kind of football that's brought you to this point because this is a reward, essentially, for the graph that has gone in over the, the, the nine months before it. Now, we put, we put up our teams, Sean, yourself and myself, put our teams on the website. Yeah. You can have a look at them today, guys. And as always, as we say along the bottom, it's £3 for three, the next three months. If you hit that subscribe button, you can join us on www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. Our teams are on there, Sean. Now, I yeah. went with the same team that started against Hearts. On Saturday, I thought it ain't broke, so he doesn't need to fix it. Mm-hmm. And probably with the fact that the, the subs can come on and make their impact after the hour, 65-minute mark, where he likes to do the kind of triple substitution, doesn't he? Yep. Uh, I Obviously, I picked that team for the, the last game. I was kind of... I was, I, was, I, mean, I was honestly on the verge of picking someone different just to be different, just just for the sake of debate. But fundamentally, I just, I just don't disagree. So I've picked the same team, I think. The only question I really had is maybe Turnbull going to start two in a row, but I think he will. He came off yeah. after 60 minutes or so. Uh, I think Yakimakis would do well at Tanadice, but again, Kyogo starts against Hearts and scores and is clearly mm-hmm. first choice, so how do you drop him? Yeah. Um, Abada has a good record against Dundee United, not just in that January game, but earlier in the season. Um, but again, <laughs> Maida scored. Jota was a standout against that, so why rotate them? I mean, I might be completely wrong, and despite the fact it's a title clincher, Postacoglu might see it as a still somewhat as a foregone conclusion and rotate now. But given that chat of him saying smashing through the finish line, I suspect not. So I, I went with the same team as well. Alison, do you see him going with the same team as well? Would you yeah, have you starting alone? I, I would take every single argument there that that Sean made. I think uh, I think it will be the same team. Um, I think I think almost now you're in a it picks itself. Really, yeah. I think um, I think it might change for for the last game, although possibly not because I think if that's the day when the trophy's been presented, they may want to stick to the the, the core players mm-hmm. who have, have helped deliver it and give them their their day in the sun. But I think I think he has options. I think when we we did speak about this um, in the build up to to these games, that since when everyone is fit, since January signings have come in. There are options in various points of the, the pitch, and I think particularly across the middle in that front three. Yes, indeed. Now, speaking of options, Sean, and it's only speculation and paper talk and website talk at the minute, but Mohanad Jazzy, the Hammerby, mm-hmm. full back, people are saying that uh, reports are saying that it's all but a done deal, £2 million pound to, to sign for Celtic in the summer. Uh, I guess until that is finalised, it will remain speculation, but maybe an indication that Ange, like January, wants to get his business done early, Sean? Uh, I think so, aye. I mean, we, we chatted about about him when the link first appeared the other week. Um, yeah. I've put a link in, in the comments because um, we got 
Ross Goodwin, aka Boys Analytics, if you're on social media, uh, to scout him for us. So he looked a wee bit uh, further in depth uh, in terms of how he compares to Greg Taylor, for instance, that kind of thing. Um, all the, the kind of details you need there that I've put in the in the comments. For me, whether it's this player or another player, the overriding positive is that feeling of can I get in business done early? Yeah. No nonsense. Yeah. Hopefully, players are pretty settled by the time the league kicks in uh, later in the year. I mean, it's night and day. Yeah. To what yeah, the fan base is used to, um, I think you'd agree. January aside, uh, that is, and I think everybody would probably be thinking more of the same. Please, if this signing gets over the line too. Uh, we spoke about it, Alison, last week, but we were saying the the irony in all of this is that in a year, where Celtic go straight into the Champions League group stages and they won't have to negotiate qualifiers. It's probably the most prepared that they've ever been going into the Champions League, mm-hmm. and it probably yeah, will be the most prepared. Yeah, yeah I think. Um... I don't think you'll see major surgery on mm. the squad. I think it's not like last summer. I think what there's been 16 players come in, I think, since Ange Postecoglou took over last June. You're not going to see those numbers because there's no need for that. I think what you'll see is a tweaking of the squad. I think you might see certain areas strengthened. Uh, I think much will depend on, on Jota and Cameron Carter Rickers, what the what the future holds for them in a Celtic context, I think the club would probably want to know fairly early on where they stand in, in that respect in order that they go and, and source replacements for two guys that have been pivotal to the campaign. But I think when when everyone is fit and available, I think it is a strong squad. And I think most of the action in terms of the transfer window for Celtic this summer will be players going out, players that are, are fringe players that haven't featured much. I think uh, that's where most of the business will come. We'll discuss that in depth in the future, Sean. Yeah, about who who comes in and who who leaves. But we yep. reckon there will be a big call this summary. Yeah, uh, I think there, I think there's got to be. I mean, he's yeah. used thirty six players this season. Yeah. Um, that's including obviously kind of brief cameos, like a Karim Dembele, Owen Moffat, uh, Joey Dawson, that kind of thing. Every one of them's played a role in this kind of title win. I said that in my my, my piece in uh, Sunday after the or Saturday after the game. But um, I think there's every likelihood that there's maybe more going out than more coming in in the summer, just given how many players he's used, but also how little he's likely to use some of them next season. Uh, given I'd, I'd imagine I've been saying to you, Tony, maybe four or five. Yeah, uh, that's my kind of four or five players. I would probably think the, Alison, uh, yeah. You agree with that, Alison, maybe four or five? What I always say is as long as it's first team quality, because yeah. otherwise, what's the point? Four yeah. or five players come in or four or five go out? No, four come or in. five coming in. I'm thinking I don't think there'll be as many as that. You don't think no. there'll be as many as that, no? No, I don't think there'll be as many as that. Okay. I think, um, depending, depending, I would say, on Jota and Cameron Carter Rickards, if you include them... I well, I, yeah, I definitely include them. They don't. They're not Celtic players. So. Yes, um, but I, I, I don't know that there'll be as many as four or five. Okay. No, I, I, I wasn't including them. So I was still. You know, that's what you no, think. No, six, no, six or so. no. I, I'm yeah, no they're, they're not. not in my, they're not in my they're not, five. So uh, they're not Celtic players. So I include them. Okay. Um, fair enough. Was, been I think the two of them, if a uh, Jazzy comes in, then that's already at three. And then I'd imagine there'd be about six or seven going out, maybe. And then I'd be surprised if there's none other two at least signed. But fair enough. Well, this is something we'll speak about in the coming weeks. It's just uh, wonderful to think that tonight Celtic can wrap up the title because they're in a position where nobody thought we would be in June. Allison, isn't that right? I think most Celtic fans would would have taken this season. As a rebuilding campaign, I think there was an appreciation of the amount of work that had to be done. I think uh, finishing a season 25 points off the pace was embarrassing. I think uh, I'm not sure it was entirely reflective of the the chasm between the two squads, but I think it did point to a real (laughs) uncertainty within the club. I think there had been a a significant unravelling from January until the end of the season last year. So I think uh, having a, a cohesive and fluent team on the pitch fairly quickly, particularly when you consider the 16 players that have all 
come into the squad, I think, would be appreciated. I think, too, given the manner of the start, you know, the the three defeats, a draw across the, the opening seven league games, I think, you know, I think a few supporters would probably have feared the worst for what the campaign held. I think to start from such a disadvantage and then go on such a consistent run, I think it will have surpassed expectations. Um, but I think it just points to the, the sheer consistency, really, of Celtic in terms of their domestic context. Sean, I just swept the managerial boards in the awards, but I did love his quip that he didn't win the award. <laughs> he, he should have got or he was touted to get sacked before Christmas. Yep. Uh, some great deadpan humour there from Ange, but he's just handled everything brilliantly, hasn't he, from the moment he's walked in the door? I think, I mean, David Gillespie making the point there that he wouldn't have believed you in August if you told told him that Celtic would be in this position. Sums it up, doesn't it? I mean, that's yeah. it's, it's uh, that's the reason he's won the, the Manager of the Year awards. That's the reason he's, he's had the, the Manager of the Month, I think, five times now, is it? Four times, five times? I think it is five. So, um, it, it goes to, I mean, the, there's all, always detractors saying the argument how much he spent. Still on a net positive in that regard. <laughs> the sheer overhaul, I would always argue, actually made his job tougher. Um, yeah. And then to go on the kind of the 30 game domestic unbeaten run, as it stands, could be 31 tonight, um, or league run, sorry. Uh, again, it just it just underlines the job that he's done, the turnaround that's happened in such a short space of time. And there is no undermining it. It is a remarkable job, and that's why he swept the board at these awards. Yeah, indeed. And it's, uh, you know, they, they go to Tannadice, a place... Alex and I was making the point that that's where it all came. They reached on that year last year. But, uh, yeah, they can make up for that this season by winning it at Tannadice. There's a nice parallel there, isn't there? Yeah, I think it's just... Uh, I, I don't think Celtic will care where they're winning it, to be honest. I think they, they just want to get it over the line. I think it will feel like a sweet title just because yeah. of what had happened last season. I think it's an important title. Um and I think, it, as I'd say, I just I think it points to just how relentless they have been in terms of their league form. I think from from October, I think it what six points maybe they've, they've dropped. I think it's been remarkably consistent. And I think tonight will just be a, a case of, of saying almost go out and enjoy the position that your hard work took you to. Enjoy the position that, that you got yourself into and accept your reward and take the acclaim that comes with it. Yep, Andrew Gillia comes in there, been a fantastic season. They have been relentless, Sean, certainly in the league. Mm -hmm. He says they have 30 games, going on 31 tonight if they get the point that's required. It's an unbelievable run, really, isn't it? It is, uh, but that, I mean, that's what was required. Ange Postacoglu's mentioned that a couple of times, that yeah. given the way that they started, and all the reasons for that, and I mean, at the time you point out, this obviously became a bit of a meme on here. I kept going on about the squad depth not really being <laughs> suitable for it. Uh, but to turn that around and then go on a, such a lengthy unbeaten run, which up until that semi-final was also just all domestic competitions, not just the league now, it's just the league, obviously. That even in itself is remarkable. Um, throw in the fact that there was derbies in there, coming out and top in the league trilogy that was, or the, the league the league derbies in April and May. And that's where, that's where the league was won as much as the, the rest of the, the kind of games. They, they turned up in those games. There's a couple of guys in the comments mentioning the Ibrooks win is when it was really kind of put to bed in terms of, well, Rangers aren't going to catch Celtic now. Uh, obviously, you're sitting here with two games left and, and that's when it's actually going to be sealed. But regardless, I think everybody would probably agree that that Ibrox win was when it was kind of all but sealed. Um, given the relentless nature of the run that you're talking about, the, the likelihood of a Celtic collapse in those games after the Ibrox win was slim. It's been borne out that they're not, they, they aren't going to collapse, they weren't going to. Um, and I, I think there is that kind of, you, you called it the other day, um, poetic justice, the kind of, something poetic about it, uh, quoting that lovely song, the Dundee song and all that, uh, the other day as well, it was, it's, it is, it's kind of bookends, it, and I, I like that, that is football, there's there's a lot of things happen like that. Uh, yeah. I'm going to put up this comment from, from the start, Frank Brennan, uh, talking about another title one at Tannadice, one of my favourites, even though I think Frank thinks I'm a lot younger than what I am, if I can't even remember it, but uh, the 2008 one, when Jan Venegura Hesselink scored, uh, obviously done that feature on the website about that seven-game run that that was the culmination of. Uh, that is, that's what I think that will be a lot of people my age is kind of one of their favourite titles. Um, 
given the manner in which it was won. Obviously, Tony, you'll be first to point out the Tommy Burns aspect as well uh, yeah. that season. And I um, never had a paper round, actually, Frank, but I remember <laughs> that title win. Did you have a paper round, Alison? No, oh, you I never did. On that <laughs> one? No, I, didn't, I didn't either. Must be this complete thing. <laughs> I, I like how you and I weren't he's putting that bracket, Tony. I've been too young. I, I correct, yeah. I, you I, know. I, 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 do you think? Do you think if we were being described, Alison, we'd be called wily campaigners? You know, <laughs> that kind of euphemism for old. You know that way. Old you know? farts. Uh, that kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, and you're younger than me, aren't you? So I. Substantially. I, I <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> I think I'm officially a Celtic da because I'm 50 this year. So I think that's I get my Celtic da badge, don't I? I, I believe. Is that, that why you were talking about Debbie Reynolds yesterday, Tony? <laughs> that was a belter, wasn't it? <laughs> Must be the mind playing tricks on me. But there you go. But no, I, I agree, Alison. How come we weren't asked to read the paper round when in our younger, more vulnerable days? But yeah, <laughs> 2008 one that will live long in the memory for. All of the reasons that you stated, Big Jan's goal, pointing to the stars, and uh, the Tom Tommy Burns title, as it's kind of known now, and mm. that seven game back to back derby wins against Rangers as well, and it's kind of backdrop to that. But mm. it's been a happy hunting ground, Tanadice, in terms of history. I, I alluded to that the other day, you know, mm-hmm. you won the title aye, there in 1981, aye. 2008 as well. And I'll tell you, Tony, see the, the one the one takeaway that I am going to shamelessly use as a bit of, a bit of knowledge um, in the years to come was I didn't realise until your piece that the only team to beat the Lisbon Lions domestically in the league that year, or in any competition that year, uh, was Dundee United, and they've done yeah. it twice in that league. I, didn't, I did not know that. That was, uh, know that? that was a lovely bit of information that I'll be using shamelessly in the years to come, I think. but I, I think that fully qualifies me as a Celtic da, Alison, what do you think? <laughs> Do you remember that, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I speak about it as if I do. Oh, they're all coming for you now, Tony. Tony was doing the coal. Tony the coal. I was driving the coal lorry. Well, you heard various tales of my driving early doors. You wouldn't want me to drive anything. Not right, else. <laughs> I can't vouch for that. <laughs> I'm going to put this up, Tony, just for no other reason. And obviously, we were talking about it yesterday. If that is... The, the new away kit, um, I don't mind saying I think it's honking. I don't, I don't like it at all. Well, you're going back to the future, aren't you? It's just a revamp of that 1992 kit, isn't it? Uh, 92 or 94, I can't remember what one it was. Oh, but yeah. I, the, the, I, I don't mind that. I don't mind using inspiration from old kits. Some of them are lovely. Like last year, if it wasn't for the fact of, of what happened last year, that the inspiration for the mid-80s away kit, I think, would have been down as one of the best. Yeah. But I, no, I, I mean... Purely aesthetically, if, I, if that's the way, I, I, I think it's honking. I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm a traditionist. I would I would just like a, a plain green kit, you know. Um, now, mm. I will show you, speaking of kits, oh, no, I here we go. go into my wardrobe. I don't own many things of a Celtic nature, but I own this because it's my favourite away kit. Yep, John. That, that's my oh, yeah. favourite ever Celtic away kit. And I think that's from about 81, 82, something like that. So I I, I would, if you're going to go back to the future then, get something like that. Alison, mm. you got a favourite away kit down the years? No, no I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> uh, I, don't, I just don't, uh, I wouldn't pay over uh, overly much attention to things like kits, honestly. Um no, I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. And that's, I think, I think you'll they, have to pay attention to it when you see all the fans getting in looking like a bag of peppermint creams next year. Right on, but I think uh, it's about associations, isn't it? I think if you yeah. have a successful season, then then certain strips become yeah. tied in with the memories and the memories it evokes around about that particular era and that particular time. That's only one of two Celtic things I own because I was presented with a. I, <laughs> Celtic jersey I, I wasn't sure record. what was coming out of the world, to be uh, perfectly they're, honest. They're, they've got that. you on toast today, Tony. Oh, yeah, I'm taking it. Uh, listen, I don't care. Celtic could be about to win the title, so if you can't have a laugh on a day like that, that's fine. But, yeah, I was given a Scott Brown Celtic kit when I left the Daily Record after 20 years and signed by Scott and Neil Lennon, so that's nice. the only other Celtic piece of regalia that I possess, to be honest, so... 
there you have it, or else I wouldn't possess anything. <laughs> but there you go. But no, I think uh, shaping up for a, a wonderful Wednesday. The mm -hmm. the commenters are in good form here, which I, I like to see. <laughs> Did Tony just come out of the course? <laughs> wow. Behave yourself now. Behave. But there you go. Uh, it's shaping up to be a good night and the Tin Lid on a wonderful season. Alison, you know, Celtic have done remarkably well and to win the title against all the odds is, and Andrew did what he said he would put a smile upon people's faces and made them proud to support their football club. Yeah, I think they'll just see tonight as a chance to go and, and finish it off. I think uh, I think it's an opportunity to go and showcase the kind of football that we've seen at points this season. I think Celtic have looked very aggressive from middle to front uh, in certain points of the campaign and I think they'll try and harness that energy tonight. I think they'll want to go and just get over the line. I think they'll want a performance to match the result and, and a performance that's worthy of, of claiming the title. Sean, is Carol Starfelt going to do it for you tonight? Don't tease me, honestly. He's, <laughs> he's, he's, as I say, he's been robbing me blind for months. <laughs> but no, uh, if we're going to go score predictions, I'm going to get in first. I think uh, a hat-trick of 3 nils at Tannadice this season on the cards. Well, uh, Radvacu obviously going four 0 there. We had a with another three 0 Martin Davy earlier on. Um, Christopher Coyle saying Kyogo hat trick to take it at me three 0 as well. Uh, Retro well, Celtic two 0 What do you think? I think three 0 as well, Sean. Yeah, that's a, a treble of three nothing from the panel there. There you go. Yeah, you never know. We had somebody in yeah. here saying fifteen 0 and then it actually was seven 0 the next game. So you. We, we all picked the same 11 to start tonight and we've all picked 3 nothing. It's written in the stars. Celtic will clinch the Scottish Premiership title tonight. You know, we've all said it, so that's what's going to happen, Sean, and 3-0. There's always one, 10 now. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's plenty of optimism abound. I took an absolute pummelin today on the briefing, but hey, that's what <laughs> happens when you're a Celtic dad and you get to an age where you have to try and defend yourself and hold on to your youth or what's left of it. The oil of Ole clearly not working, but there you go. <laughs> Sean and Alison, thanks for your contribution today. Always appreciate it. Thanks for all the comments. And remember to download, as you can see, our new sponsor, the One Football app. It's a one stop football shop for scores, news, lineups, transfer rumours, live streaming, match highlights, and much, much more. And immerse yourself in the digital football world and enjoy the yep. best personalised digital football experience out there. And also, while you're at it, you can subscribe to the Celtic Way, £3 for the next three months. And all you have to do is hit the subscribe button, www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. You'll see me taking more ribbons and also read all the contributors, all the articles, stats, analysis, you name it, opinions, we've got them all. It's all there, stuff from Alison, Sean, myself and various other uh, contributors. It's all great stuff. But thank you. Enjoy tonight, guys. It's, uh, yep. it's been a long year. It's been a long time coming. But just enjoy the moment. Savour it. Drink it in. Have a great night. Here's hoping Celtic do it in style. Alison, Sean, thanks very much. Always appreciate it. Thank Cheers, you. Tony. Cheers, guys.